Good morning. All right, good. I just me. got thing to the top of the Google Classroom a few minutes ago because it got muddy down a little bit with some comments. So that holds okay. up the sometimes. They're good with sure. technology. They don't like to scroll down. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Good morning, everyone. So if you don't have your bag handy, you may want to go ahead and grab that, grab your CSI bag, make sure you've got it where you can reach it. We're gonna need a few things out of there this morning. And your supply bag, your art supply bag, okay? So make sure you have both of those things where you're going to work today. I hope everybody had a good night. Did you have fun with your activities yesterday? Type in your favorite activity from yesterday. We did lots of stuff together yesterday and then you did lots more with your teachers yesterday afternoon. I'd love to hear what, what you were most excited about from what all of the things in your activities and in your bag for yesterday. <laughs> I thought the lips might be on that list, the lip prints. <laughs> That's fantastic. And remember, if you weren't with us yesterday, that's okay. Everything is recorded. So if you want to go back in and watch the video and, and do the activities with us, you can. We had a a lot of fun with um, with the lip prints, as you can see, and we did our footprints and um, had more fun with, um, we did talk about fingerprints. That was Monday we did our fingerprints, right? All right. Pedro, you weren't here yesterday. That's okay, kiddo. I got your message about the dentist, but we, it, your kit isn't useless. The things that you didn't do yesterday, Mr. Toll has uploaded the YouTube video that they're recording. So that way you can go back and you can do what we did yesterday with um, the materials that you have for Tuesday's packet, okay? So maybe that's something you can do um, late this morning before we meet again at 1.30. All right, so for today, guys, we're going to pull out our Wednesday bag. Remember, you have a separate bag for all your papers by days of the week. So grab your Wednesday bag, and on the front of it is a handwriting sample. That's for your evidence on the IMAG crime, uh, so that you're collecting all week long to solve that mystery at the end of the week. And then I'll pull that out so you can see behind that. The next thing is one of these identify these objects with four small photographs. Okay. And these are objects associated with crime scene investigation. So this was one of the extra activities you were getting every single day. That's in there. 
And then I know we've all had fun with our spot the difference pictures. Okay, so that's in there too. All right. Had a few more jump on. Okay, good. Let's see. All right. So you have the um, mini mystery from yesterday looming. We talked about the snack shack mini mystery that was in your packet yesterday. Okay, everybody got one of these yesterday? I will reread it together so that you all can share with me the Wednesday bag, Emily. It just says Wednesday. You just need the big Wednesday bag that has all the papers in it, okay? So right now, that's all we need. All right, so for our mini mystery, Carverville's Beach Snack Shop had been open only an hour when Max stopped in and noticed a new poster announcing a price increase. I put the sign up this morning, Mr. Levine told him. I had to raise my prices 10% because I have so many new expenses. Like now, I need a new window for my back room. Somebody broke it trying to get into my store last night. Have you called the police, Max asked? Mr. Levine replied, no, nothing was stolen. He led Max to a small storeroom in the back and said, I used this space as an office. Sat here and made my price change poster last night. Soon as I was done, I left it on that old desk. I locked the door to the main part of my store. When I left, so whoever got in was stuck in this little storeroom. There's nothing here to steal. When Max left, he wandered down to the break wall where Nathan and Trevor were fishing. Did you hear that? Somebody broke a window at the shack, he asked. Nope, Nathan said. We've been here since dawn and haven't talked to anybody. Trevor gestured to the bucket. We've caught some big ones, Nathan stood, but now I'm starving. I've got a dollar left for my allowance. If Mr. Levine is there now, I'm going to go up to the shack to get a big beach bun. Better get another dime from somewhere, Trevor told him. A dollar's not enough anymore. As for me, I'm going home to get a couple sandwiches for myself. You both stay right here, Max said. I know which one of you broke that window. You'd better think of a way to pay for it because I'm telling Mr. Levine. So how did Max Figure it out. Did any of you figure it out? So type in the chat for me. How did Max know which one of them broke into the store? Anybody have any guesses? Go ahead and type it into the chat for me. So Nathan and Trevor were both sitting there saying they were fishing all day. And they said they'd been there since dawn and hadn't talked to anyone all day long. And when did Mr. Levine change his prices? Just that morning, right? So he changed them just that morning and somehow the boys knew without having been over there, Mr. Levine had just put up his poster about the price increase that morning. Nathan and Trevor said they had been fishing since dawn and had spoken to no one since Trevor knew that a dollar bun was now a dollar and 10 cents. He must have been the one who broke the window and got inside the back room where he read the poster lying on the old desk. Okay? Was that, was that anyone's hunch? 
All right, so we will set that one aside. Are you enjoying your mini mysteries? Are those fun? Those are, those are kind of like riddles, right? Okay, so let's look at our new spot difference. Because you've gotten one of these every day. And you have a new one in there. So we won't necessarily do this together, but I just want to show you to look for that in your pocket because when we get out of the call today, you guys can pull that out and work on that before our, um, actually, yeah, you, before your 1.30, okay? And Pedro, you'll have time then to do the things that you missed yesterday. All right, so for this next activity, you're gonna need a piece of paper, any piece of paper will do. So you can use the back of one of your sheets from your Wednesday bag, if you have blank paper lying around, you can use that. If you have lined paper, you want to use something from yesterday, you just need a piece of paper and a pencil, okay? Which I already pulled out of my activity bag. All right? So, for this next one, you all are going to play the role of a sketch artist. So this was a common way for um, police and investigators to take a witness description and turn it into something visual that could be used to um, identify someone, to at least um, give the, the public um, or other people that may have been um, at the crime scene or around the crime scene a way to see if they saw this person of interest, okay? So I have a couple of pictures here. I'm gonna choose one and I am going to describe a person that I saw and you all are going to try to turn my description into a drawing, okay? You don't have to be super artistic to do this. You're just going to try and draw the features that I described and see what you come up with, okay? All right, so everybody have a pencil and a piece of paper to draw on, okay? All right, so the person that I saw was a girl. She looked to be around 14 years old, maybe 13, maybe 15, somewhere around there. She has brown hair. She has kind of a square face and with a cute little chin. She has brown eyes. She has short hair. It's above her shoulders. It's right on her neck, probably about to here, okay? So brown hair, and she has it braided in the front. So kind of a braid coming across the front, down the side. She has a small mouth with pink lips, rosy cheeks, and she's wearing a black jacket over a white shirt. Let's see, I don't think she has any freckles. I don't see any piercings or 
tattoos or anything that's very remarkable, no birthmarks. She has, let's see, let's look at the shape of her eyes. Oh, she has um, skinny brown eyebrows. And average sized ears. Okay. So what I'd love for you guys to do as you finish drawing just a basic sketch, nothing fancy, just a line sketch of the person I described. I wanted you to see if that person looks familiar at all. Because the person that I described is someone that you all might have seen on television. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I won't quit my day job. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd love it if you guys, when you're ready, can show the camera your drawing because I think it would be neat to share with everybody. Oh, look, these are great. <laughs> Those are fantastic. <laughs> Are you seeing this, Matt? They're great. <laughs> you guys are fabulous. <laughs> Allie is working hard there. This is great. All right. I don't want to show the photo before I see Miss Allie's lovely drawing. <laughs> But she has been in a very popular TV show. Oh, oh there we go, Molly. Oh, look at that. Excellent. Oh, fantastic. She has, I, I believe she hosted or um, was um, one of the MCs of a big Nickelodeon award show. The, the person I described to you is pictured right here. Oh, am I covering her face? There you go. So, Millie Bobby Brown. So, how did I do in my description, guys? If I was a witness and I was describing that person, do you think my description, <laughs> Selena Gomez? <laughs> so, if my description led you to Selena Gomez <laughs> and uh, Millie Bobby Brown, I don't think I did the best job at this, guys. So we all have uh, to think about how hard it is to convey some of these details about what a person looks like. Um, it's a lot harder than you would think, right? So. The, the things that we commonly think about are hair color, eye color, skin color. I didn't even address that. I forgot about that altogether. I, I did look for tattoos or piercings or identifying marks like birthmarks because those can be helpful if somebody has a mole or somebody has a lot of freckles. That can, that can help. Um, my goodness, I didn't do that at all. Um, clothing, so that can be helpful in some situations, a black jacket, um, I, that may or may not, lots of people wear, wear black, right? I don't know. So, and then things like lip shape and eye shape, when I was looking, couldn't even think of how to describe what the shape of her eyes looked like. So, oh, am I, was I close, Emily, on the age? Yes, so you were right. That's the girl from Stranger Things. And I am, oh, wow, I wondered if I was even close on the age. Okay, so she is like 14. Okay. The other person, let's see. 
So if I had described the other picture, he was a male, okay? Similar hair color, similar length. So I wonder how we would have done with that one. And he's very expressive in that picture, and who knows? I'm told that's David Dobrik. I'm, I'm not up on um, who's popular with um, teens and older children, um, but I guess he's a YouTube star. So, I have, we're going to take this challenge a little farther. Oh, see, somebody knows him. <laughs> yes, so that would have been different because I would have said a, a boy instead of a, a girl, right? So, the gender did help narrow it down a little bit. Um, and then, if I had seen the, um, the whole body, I could have described more the height, um, weight or frame of the person. Um, you know, Millie Bobby Brown has a very small frame. She's very thin. Um, I don't know David Dobrik, so I couldn't describe any more about him. But um, the, you know, there's a lot to think about when you're trying to convey a description and turn that into something that anyone else be, would be able to use to identify a person of interest. Okay. So now, in your bag, you guys have a sheet that looks like this. So instead of, instead of trying to draw, now I'm going to describe one of the people in these pictures. And I want you all to see if you can guess, if you can choose from all of these images. So we have 12 images here. If you can choose from the 12 images, which is the one that I am describing, okay? So, let's see. All right. So, you have 12 images to choose from. Did everybody find the sheet? Can you show your camera so I can see you got it? Excellent. Thank you, Allie. Did you find it? Oh, she's fishing in her bag. Good. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. So this is the sheet you want to be looking at. Because as I described, if you see something, if, if that my description eliminates one of the people or more than one of the people photographed, you can use your pencil that you were just using to draw with to put an X through that image, okay? So you can kind of rule people out that way and dwindle your selection down. And when you think that you know who I'm describing, go ahead and type in the chat that you've got it so we can check in, okay? So remember to type in the chat so everybody can see it. All right, so. Okay, are you ready for this challenge, guys? This is a tricky one. Okay, so. The person that I saw looks to be in his 20s, maybe close to 30, but male, brown hair, short hair, a little longer at the top, and it's he has it styled, sticking up on the top, kind of tussled with some mousse or something so that it's sticking up, but trimmed closer on the sides. He has brown sideburns that come down to the base of his ear. He has blue eyes very blue eyes, 
and brown eyebrows. His eyebrows look pretty neat. That he does not have a unibrow where some, some people's eyebrows go all the way across. He's got a big break between his eyebrows over his nose. His face looks to be pretty clean shaven. He is wearing a blue shirt with a collar. Oh, a couple of you. A couple of you think you've got it. He is wearing a, let's see if that's a green jacket or blazer over his blue collared shirt. Let's see, his, he has a, Narrowish chin. Hmm. This is tricky. Oh, his, he has, I would say, medium skin tone. Um, he is Caucasian, but not as fair as I am. His skin is a little darker than mine. He is not. I'm um, freckled. He does not wear glasses. He does not have any birthmarks or um, tattoos or piercings or identifying marks on his face or neck or um, ears that I can see. Ah, okay. We've got, we've got some good guesses rolling in, and Julian is hot on the case here. Good work, guys. So I, I don't know that I'm doing a fabulous job at this, but somehow I think Julian got it. Would you all like to see who I was describing? See that one, Matt? All right. Oh, there we go. So, Julian was spot on. Second row, first person. Okay? Now, Emily was hugely helpful when um, she typed the question, he wears glasses. So, I wasn't even thinking about whether I should describe whether the person had glasses or not, but that was a great prompt. So, I think you can see how much that interactivity could help the process to uh, see if, the, to, to spur the person to maybe remember or think about some details that didn't seem re remarkable to them at the time, but could help narrow down a description. And so that's what a police sketch artist would do, and then now you have, instead of someone um, drawing, quite often, because that's a, a very limited skill set, um, quite often uh, police stations are using software, facial composite software, where um, someone could make a description and the computer generates an image based on that description, and the person can then, the witness could then look at that composite image and say, no, the chin was a little more square, or the jaw was more prominent, or his nose was bigger, um, or, you know, he had a bit of a bump on his nose. Um, the uh, sides of his hair were longer than that. You know, so these are the things that um, when it's a more interactive process, you can often get to a point where there are more details. So that would be a fun thing for you guys to do with a sibling. So you can use your same suspect description sheet. So there were 12 images there. So try this with a, a family member. You could even do it with a friend.
and on, on Zoom where you just pick one of the images and you describe it and you play kind of a guess who, okay? And see how you do. And, and see if it helps if you have them asking you questions. Has anybody um, played the game Guess Who? There was a fun game Guess Who, and I know, um, you, oh good, some of you have played that game before. Oh, I love that game. And, and that is kind of like this, right? But I will say that this was a lot more challenging than Guess Who because all of these, what, what do we notice about all of these? You can type in, what do they all have in common? You can type in, your comments. So, are any of, so are any of these pictures female? No, no, right? They're all male. They are all white males. They're all Caucasian. They all have similar skin tone. So there's a couple that are a hair darker and a, or a hair fairer, but that would be tricky just from description. And then, yeah, look at the eyes. So they all have brown hair and blue eyes. Okay? So that made it way harder than when you play the game Guess Who? and um, you can more easily eliminate people. So this was really tricky, but I'd love for you guys to take that challenge a little farther and recruit your siblings or your parents um, or even a friend over Zoom, because that would be fun. And, and that's how, um, that is often how um, investigators will uh, come up with a, um, the image that they'll show on the news, we're looking for this person, okay? So, because very rarely does anybody realize that there's a crime going on in, in most situations, and are they able to take a picture and say, we're looking for this person? Now, it does happen more so now that there are cameras um, placed in, around businesses and things, so we'll see, um, and a still from a video camera where people are walking into a store and they'll say, okay, we are looking for this person because when we, um, you know, he, he got away stealing something from a store and this, you know, the description, when we compared the description to the footage and the time, you know, this was uh, the person we've narrowed this down to but sometimes they have nothing to go by and you can only use the description to generate an image. So, tricky stuff. All right, so that's fantastic. You guys did great. All right, so now this next one is fun. All right, so go ahead, get your art supply bag back out, okay? Because I need you to get your marker set, and take out your black marker, okay? So take your black marker out, keep your pencil, all right? Oh, and the other thing you're gonna want are your scissors, okay? So get your scissors, your black marker, and then fish in your CSI bag because you want Wednesday activity three, okay? So Wednesday activity three, you wanna tap to, um, type that in the chat mark, Wednesday activity three, that's the bag you're looking for, and your scissors and your black marker from your art supply bag. Okay, so your Wednesday activity three bag has, your, has coffee filters, if anybody has an old school coffee maker, not one of those fancy Keurigs where you um, pop in the pod, but uh, the coffee maker where you have the filter and you put the grinds in it, that's what this is. So this flower shaped piece of paper. So you want those. There's a couple there. And cups. Okay. There we go. You have three cups here, and 
two markers, okay? So you have two markers. There you go. Now, remember I asked you to get your black marker out of your marker set? So, when you add that, you now have three markers, okay? And it's okay if they don't look just like mine. All right. So, actually, here I have your, there you go. Okay. So, this one, I came in and started this morning because I wanted you to be able to see what happened over time to give you a little peek at that. But we start with our cups and add a little bit of water. So you don't need to add the water yet, but we're going to use water in these cups. So hang on to them. Let's go ahead and let's cut our coffee filters first before we write on our cups. Okay. So you want your coffee filter to be shaped where it's wider at the top and smaller at the bottom about an inch, okay, on the bottom, and two inches or so at the top. Doesn't have to be super precise, but you want to go ahead and cut strips, okay? And the wire at the top part is going to be helpful in these cuts, because that, that will help hold it up for you. And you could be, you could do it like two or three inches, even four inches at the top if you like. You've got two coffee filters here. Or three. Let's see how many do we have. All right, so. Get these separated. So you want some strips that you can use. And there we go. Let's get these scraps out of the way. Okay. Everybody see those? All right. So you can lay your strips out. And you can use your pencil. There we go, that you were using for your sketch. Great job, guys. I see your strips. So you can use your pencil and go ahead and lay your markers out. And this is the marker that you got out of your set. The brand on the, there's not a brand written on the marker, but the brand on the set says Jot. Tiana, it's the Wednesday, exactly like a triangle. Um, it's the Wednesday activity three bag is what you want. So that had Wednesday activity three bag. It's a gallon size Ziploc bag. It had your coffee filters. It had your plastic cups and two extra markers that you're going to add to your black marker from your marker set. So we're going to test three markers today. And you have, you have extra coffee filters, so you could get another black marker um, from, that, from around your house if you want to test that. So we're going to do this with water today. So a washable marker is going to be a neat comparison. So we have one washable marker here. And you have two different kinds of permanent markers, okay? One washable and two different kinds of permanent markers. If you have another wa black washable marker around the house, you can grab another one, okay, to test with it. Because you can get at least four strips out of what's in your bag. Um, there you go. I, only had, I only had two markers, not three. Yes, you only have two in this bag because I want you to get your marker set that's in your art supply bag, okay? And the reason I want you to get this one is because this is a washable marker, okay? 
And I want you to be able to see the difference between a washable marker and a permanent marker. All right. So the two black markers in your bag with your cups and your filters and the black marker from your marker set that was in your art supply bag. All right. And if you just now get your art supply bag, be sure to grab your scissors as well. Okay, and a pencil if you weren't doing the other activities with us. Okay, all right. So then you lay your markers next to your strips. Get your pencil, or you can use a regular pen, but you don't want to use the marker to do this. You want to write what marker you're doing at the top. The wide part. So at the wide end is where I'm writing, not the back. Okay, and that's just with pencil so that I remember which marker is being tested on which strip of paper. Okay, and you should get at least four strips out of your copy filters. So remember, you have that option to grab a different marker from around the house and to test it. It'd be Great if you have one that is just kind of a regular washable marker and not another permanent marker like a Sharpie, okay? All right, so you can write, so permanent marker, um, Sharpie, if you have a Sharpie brand, I think you guys have an Amazon brand of a permanent marker, okay? All right. Okay, and then you're going to take the marker, the same one that you wrote, the name of it on your strip, and you want to make a dot, a big dot, but know that you're going to put this in your cup with some water in it, okay? So if I'm going to put, see how much water I was using here? And one of the ones that I started for you. So I want to make sure that I put my dot higher than the water line that's in my cup. So I'm going to put it, I would say about two inches up, an inch and a half, the two inches up to be safe. Okay. So you can just make a great big dot. Nothing fancy, just make a big dot. You just want to get the ink from the marker onto your filter paper. Okay? All right. Go across. And you guys can do this right along with me. Thanks. Okay. 
stick those in there. There we go. There we go. All right. So, you see those three cups? And you can see where I wrote the jot is the washable marker that we got from our set. I had a Sharpie brand and an Amazon permanent marker here. Okay. And then rubbing alcohol, we were finding so for a permanent marker, for a, let's say, so for a washable marker like your jot, the one we got out of our marker set, right? What's going to happen if you get water on something that you wrote on with a washable marker? What's going to happen to that ink? Is it going to stay? Juliana wants to try this with different liquids, which you can absolutely do. So I did try with one other different liquid because we do this, um, chrome, so this is called chromatography. And, and chromatography is separating the inks into their the different color components, the different components of the ink. So the chroma referring to color, right? So we're separating the colors of the ink from one another so that you can see what is inside of these markers. Well, since we use some permanent markers, often we do this chromatography with alcohol, rubbing alcohol like you would put on a scrape okay or isopropyl alcohol which is just a little bit stronger of a disinfectant but because of that disinfectant quality um alcohol has been harder for for some people to buy and sometimes you can only buy one bottle at a time so we're trying to limit the um, things that you were doing with alcohol and give you things that you could do with water so you guys are doing this with water now but if you have some out rubbing alcohol at home or isopropyl alcohol at home, you can try this with the alcohol, especially on one of the permanent markers, okay? Because a permanent marker is called well, a permanent marker because it's not supposed to wash away when it gets wet with water, right? So if we look at the um, markers that I did over here, so this is one of my washable markers. This was the jot, the one that you guys have and are doing. This is a Crayola marker, a Crayola marker. Um, oh look, and this is a procedural fail here. This is my Rose Art marker, but if you notice, I had a little bit more water in this cup and my paper kind of dropped in more so. I didn't get it situated as well um, where it stayed up. And so if you notice, what color is the water in the bottom of my cup? Not clear anymore, is it? So that means the ink from the, the water made contact with the ink on this paper enough that it was able to wash down into my water. That's why I did the dots higher up. So that's less likely to happen, okay? Because if your dot is below the water line, then your ink is just gonna wash into the water and you won't get as good a view. But if you look at my permanent marker here, so this one, this one I did with water, and you can see absolutely nothing on this filter. This is my Amazon brand, or no, not the Amazon brand. This is the one that you guys have um, that is just solid black. So this is that um, brand permanent marker. And there we go, nothing, okay? But for a comparison, I did one with alcohol, with the rubbing alcohol or the isopropyl alcohol. And if you look at that one, same marker, this is still the same marker, but instead of just using water as my solvent, I use the alcohol. And you can see 
it did separate out the inks there and it's still trailing up the paper and I see some black, blue, and even purple. Can you guys see that? Matt's gonna get it closer for me so you guys can get a good look. All right. So this is gonna be cool to do with yours at home. And you can reuse your cups. You can, um, you can use, so copy filters, if you have copy filters, they work great. You can use your scraps. You have um, the um, option of, you could try it with um, tissue paper. Tissue paper works too. It just, um, it tends to be thinner. It's, it will dissolve in water faster if you leave it for too long. So you don't want to, if you do it, if you do it with some tissue paper, you'll want to take it out sooner. So you can see how far the water has traveled up. You see that wavy line at the top? You can see how far the water has traveled up. When you've gotten it um, to where you're satisfied and the water's moved up your copy filter paper, you can take it out and, and lay it out. So one, if, you're, um, if your water turned blue, that means you did like I did here with this sample with the rose art, where my ink dot got down into the water. So you can, um, you can try again with the dot a little higher on your other ones, all right? Because you want, ideally, you want your water to be clear and you just want to see the colors travel up the coffee filter, all right? And you have, in your packet, you received this groovy font up here across the top, the rainbow font that says Chromatography Basics, okay? So this is going to walk you through this even more so, all right? So you can see what you're doing here and see some of the properties at play. So your water is traveling up that, that coffee filter. It's climbing that filter because it's an absorbent paper. All right? And so there are little spaces in the paper, pores in the paper, and the water molecules are moving into those pores. And water likes to stay together. The cohesive properties of water, it likes to stay together. So they're following each other and they're going up higher and higher and higher and taking the ink with them. And look at this, my job that I just did. Look at how cool that's looking right now. Matt, can you hold this one up closer? So you can see, even though it was black ink, you can see some red, some blue, some orange. You guys see that? Very cool. And that's just in the water. So you guys will start to see this too, okay? All right, compared to my Sharpie and my um, Amazon permanent marker that's doing nothing in the water, okay? I can see that the water is moving up, but the ink is not separating. All right, so you guys have some fun ahead of you today where you can finish this. And I think there was one more thing in your pocket. Oh, that's right. We, you have your spot, the difference in your pocket. And don't forget our ongoing iMag Crime, where we added our, um, the handwriting sample today. All right. So I think you guys have your work ahead of you. And thank you for joining us today. Yes, and that was, it was, it's really cool that we got to see, um, we got to see some of this happen in real time, right? So it does, it, some of this doesn't take that long. Watch your, watch your alcohol move up. So alcohol is, it moves up the, up the paper slower than the water does. So be prepared for that and watch that one as it goes a little bit longer, okay? All right. Well, you guys, does anybody have any questions for me before we sign off? Feel free to type them in the chat. No, guys, just make sure that you are doing your attendance in the Google Classroom. We will see you guys again at 1.30. About 1 o'clock, I'll post our link, and I'll post the materials that you need along with today's agenda. So enjoy your time, eat some lunch, and be ready at 1.30. Thank you, Imaginarium. Thank you. You guys have a great day, everybody.